Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Children's Church Online. Today, we're going to learn that gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. Let's celebrate that God can grow gentleness in our lives. And once again, I'm going to refer you to my handy dandy tree that I drew weeks and weeks ago, right? So here's our tree. And this tree represents us. We've got our roots coming down to connect us to God. And as we travel up, you can see all of our heart fruits. And today, the fruit that we're going to be concentrating on is gentleness. When something is special to us, we want others to be gentle with it. So I want you to think about something of yours that is precious that you would want someone to be gentle with. And I'll give you an example of myself. Something of mine that I want people to be gentle with is my dog. Um, her name is Lizzie and she's a seven year old beagle and she weighs about 25 pounds. So she's not a super big dog. And she's used to people just being really calm and lazy. And so that's how she is. So when people come into our house and they see we have a dog, most people want to go over and see her. And I really appreciate when people are just gentle to her because she's just a sweet thing. And I always want people to be gentle. I don't want anybody to be rough with her or pull her tail or her ears. I just want them to be nice and gentle and pet her and be kind to her. So what do you have at your house that is special to you and important to you that if someone came to your house and you were going to show them this thing or pet or whatever you have that you would want them to be gentle with? So we need to be gentle with other people because they are also special to God. Let's see how Jesus was gentle with a woman in the Bible. All right, for today's Bible lesson, I'm going to talk to you about it, but during the lesson, I'm going to need you to do some writing. And what you're going to need is a piece of paper, blank piece of paper, any size, shape, and color will do. But to write on your paper, you're going to use your finger. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So you actually don't need anything to write with, just a finger. Okay, so grab something that you can write on and a finger. All right, okay, here we go. On your paper, the first thing I want you to do is write the worst thing that you've ever done. Something you're really ashamed of that you wouldn't want everyone to know that you did, okay? No looking at anybody else's paper, using your finger. I want you to write on your paper the thing that you have done that you're most ashamed of. Okay, you got it? All right, now I want you to hold up your paper for everyone to see that you're sitting with right now, and I'm showing you mine. Got it? Okay, now what I want you to imagine is that as you're holding up your paper, the ink that you used from your finger suddenly becomes visible and everyone around you can see what you wrote. Oh. How does that feel? How would it make you feel if everybody around you could see what you just wrote on your paper, the thing that you've done that you're most ashamed of? Icky, uncomfortable, ashamed, embarrassed, yeah. We all have things that we'd rather people didn't know about us. But fortunately, your finger ink won't become visible, so no one will know what you wrote. As a matter of fact, you can take that piece of paper and you can crumble it up instead. And I want you to hold on to it. So go ahead and do that. Crumble it up into a ball. Just hold on to that piece of paper. The woman in today's Bible story 
felt like you just did. Only for her, everyone actually did see what she'd done wrong. You see, Jesus was teaching a crowd of people when some religious leaders brought this woman to him. They put her in front of the crowd and announced the thing that she had done. And for this woman, she was caught on a date with someone else's husband. Not good, right? So, here's our woman, okay? And I wrote the word sinner, and she is the one who went on the date with somebody else's husband. What do you think it was like for her to stand in front of the crowd of people and everybody there knowing the terrible, awful thing that she had done? How would she feel? I think she'd feel pretty awful, right? It would be so embarrassing and uncomfortable for her. And the problem is she didn't have to just stand there. I'm going to read from you or for you from the Bible, the book of John, and I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to be looking at chapter 8, beginning with verse 5. This is what it says. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So I'm not sure if you understand what that means, but in the law at that time, if a woman was caught going on a date with someone else's husband, the punishment would be that people would pick up rocks, stones, and throw them at her until she would die. Isn't that awful? Wouldn't that be a horrible thing? Yeah. I want you to think about a time that you got into trouble and you knew that you deserved to be punished and you were just waiting for the punishment. Thankfully, we don't do things like that to people today, but we do face punishments, right? And it's uncomfortable. So there she is standing there. She's embarrassed and ashamed that everybody knows what she's done wrong. And then on top of it, she also knows what the punishment is for the thing that she did. And she's just standing there waiting for the people to start picking up rocks and start throwing them at her. Imagine how awful that would feel. This woman was in big trouble. The law said that she deserved to be killed by having people throw the stones at her. But Jesus surprised everyone by treating the woman with gentleness. Remember, gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. So listen to what Jesus did. They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. Now, we don't know what Jesus was writing in the sand because the Bible doesn't tell us. But maybe he was writing a scripture verse, okay? So take your finger and I want you to, on the floor in front of you, write the word Bible with your finger. Okay, like Jesus would have, right? Maybe he was writing the word forgive. So take a minute, take your finger pen and write the word forgive on the floor in front of you. Okay, remember he was writing this in the sand. Maybe he was listing the names or sins of the religious leaders instead of the woman. Hmm, perhaps. Start writing down the names of the people in your family. Do you think that they have sinned? We all have, right? So write down everybody in your family. Okay, got all mine. Or maybe he was just doodling. You know what doodling means? Just drawing fun swirls and shapes. Probably not doodling. Whatever Jesus was writing, it wasn't enough for the religious leaders. They demanded an answer. So here is what Jesus said. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down 
and wrote on the ground. Hmm. What do you think about how Jesus responded to them? How did it show gentleness? Remember, gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit, and that means it comes from God. Jesus showed a great example of gentleness. He could have gone along with the religious leaders. He could have said how bad the woman's sin was. She, she did do a wrong thing. But instead, he pointed out that everybody else there, all the people in the crowd, all the religious leaders or important people that were there, had also sinned. And that this woman was no different than anyone else that was there. And you know what? That message got through. Listen to what happened next. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time. The older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. So what I want you to imagine, you still have your crumpled piece of paper in your hand, is that that's the stone that would have been used to stone this woman. And instead of throwing it at her, we're gonna drop our stones and walk away. So I want you to just drop that out of your hand onto the floor. Jesus is gentle because gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit that comes from God. After everyone walked away, you know what Jesus could have done? He could have thrown a stone because he actually was perfect. He was the only one there who had never sinned. But here's what he did instead. Listen to this. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. I want you to think about what you wrote on your paper earlier. You might feel like Jesus could never love you or forgive you after the awful thing that you have done. Or maybe you know he loves you, but you feel like he looks at you a little funny, knowing you did what you wrote on your paper. The truth is, even though Jesus can't stand sin, he does not like sin, right? He is gentle and loving with us and he's always ready to forgive us. We're going to watch a video about a boy, and I think that you will, well, maybe be able to relate to this boy. I certainly could. Today, we're learning that gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit, and it's easier to understand why gentleness is important when we think about other people treating us with gentleness. So I want you to watch this and listen to this story and see if you can relate to it. My name is Keizo and I am nine years old. Named after a samurai in my grandma's Japanese family. And I'm Keizo's mom and my name is Miki. I like playing sports and hanging out with my family. I have a pet guinea pig and his name is Chewy. I have to clean the cage, feed him every day, and change his water every two days. I like guinea pigs because they are fluffy and they make poop noises. Keizo and his family love to spend time together. Our family likes to play games a lot, mostly board games, but we also like to play video games together. I like playing video games with my dad and my brother. My favorite video games are Lego games and sports games. I try to be my brother in them. Keizo and his big brother like to borrow video games from their local library. Their parents have a rule that when the kids get a library card, they're responsible for the materials they check out. One day, Keizo and his mom went to the library to return some games and books. When they arrived, they were surprised to discover that Keizo had failed to return the games, and they were very overdue. So we went to the library together and um, Keizo had pulled some other video games that he wanted to check out. And when we went to, when we put his card in the slot, we had to see a librarian. 
and so we went there. I expected that there would probably be a fine and usually it's about $10. After you reach $10, they won't let you check out materials anymore. And the librarian said that I had a $60 fine and I was freaked out. That was quite a fine. That meant the games were overdue for a long period of time. And so I was just scrambling like, what are we gonna do with that? Initially, I asked the librarian at the desk, is there any mercy? Is there any way the fine could be reduced? And she had to call another librarian, I guess, who was a more senior librarian. And so while we were waiting for that librarian to come, I looked at Queso and I said, you know, we're gonna have to figure something out because that is quite serious. I was getting really scared and nervous when the librarian had to go talk to the other librarian about my fine. And so when the librarian came, I had Queso actually explain the situation to the librarian and take responsibility for his mistake. And the librarian listened very patiently and was very kind and spoke directly to him and said, you know, you do understand that when you check out materials, it is your responsibility to turn them back in. But the librarian offered grace and said, we'd be happy to reduce your fine in half. So instead of $60, it's gonna be $30. I'd pay the fine with my allowance. Kezo made a mistake when he failed to take the games back when they were due. But because the librarian showed gentleness in the way she handled the situation, Kezo learned a valuable lesson. That's kind of like how God shows us gentleness when we do bad things. And God helps us show gentleness too. So what was gentle about the way the librarian treated the boy in our video today. Could any of you relate to that? Have you ever had to pay an overdue fine at the library? I have. I remember the first time it happened, it was completely by accident. I just totally lost track and ended up with a fine at the library. And when I had to go in um, to pay the fine, now my fine was not to the degree that the boys was in our video today. I think I owed like 50 cents or a dollar, but I was still embarrassed that I had been irresponsible and had not returned my library book on time. And I was feeling so nervous to walk up to the library and just like the boy in the story was. And when I told her I needed to pay my fine, she just looked it up and I gave her the money and that was the end and we moved on and she wasn't mad at me, she didn't yell at me. It was like it wasn't a big deal at all. So now if that happens to me again, I try to remember that, you know, God forgives us. We all make mistakes, right? And not to worry so much. The librarian could have charged that boy the full amount that he actually owed, right? It's what he owed because he made a mistake. He didn't take the video games back when he should have. The punishment was paying a large fine and that's, what he should have had to do, right? She could have also yelled at him for being irresponsible and not returning them on time. But instead, that librarian showed gentleness and that helped the boy a lot. We can help others by being gentle when they mess up because gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. All right, so to end our lesson together today, we are going to make something, okay? We're going to be making a glider. Now, I sent your parents an email and it has this set of instructions on how to create the glider. So if you wanna do this after the video and you don't remember the steps on how to do it, you can ask for a grown up to pull up those instructions and they can help you with it. But it's actually a, a pretty simple thing. I'm going to show you how to make this, all right? So you will need a piece of paper like this, okay? This is just a piece of paper out of our printer, a, a, just a standard sheet of paper. And the first thing you're going to do is fold it in half like this this, okay, up and down. And then once you've done that, if you open it back up, you can kind of see that I have a crease or a straight line right down the center, okay? 
The second thing you're going to do is pull in the top corners and match them up to the line and then fold that. So I'm gonna lay it here on my table for just a second. Make sure I get that nice and crisp. Okay, so you see how that looks? So you'll do that to both sides of your paper. So it'll end up looking like kind of like a triangle at the top with a real nice point, okay? The next thing you're going to do is to fold your glider in half back where you had folded it in the beginning, right? And then the last step is to fold the sides down like this. And when you do that, they're calling it a glider, paper airplane, whatever you want to say, you've got this, okay? Now, if you want to, you can decorate this in any way you like um, to make it fancy. If there's more than one of you there making one, you might want to decorate it so that once we start doing the activity with these, you can tell whose is whose. Okay, maybe even at least put your initials on here. So I want you to make a paper airplane, okay? And then I want you to do some experimenting with your paper airplane to see which throwing technique makes your plane fly the farthest, okay? Or the nicest. So you could try throwing it as hard as you can. You can try throwing it as gentle as you can, um, starting up high, starting down low, throwing it over your shoulder, whatever. I want you to pause the video and take some time and experiment with flying your airplane. So what if I just don't do it? That's what I think I'm going to do. Let's do that. Okay, so did you get a chance to practice flying your airplane? Now, something I found helpful whenever I was practicing flying with my airplane was I took a paper clip and I just put it on the nose end of my airplane. And that paper clip puts some weight on the front. And I found that when I did that, my airplane flew a lot nicer. So you can do things like that. The other thing you can do is you can get fancy with folding techniques. So like even adding an extra fold down before you do this last piece, if I do that to both sides, okay? You can also get fancy with what you do to the back end, okay, flipping these up, down. There's lots of things that you can do with paper airplanes to make them fly differently. Um, and if you go online, I'm sure you could find lots of really cool patterns too in which to um, fold them. Matter of fact, I always like to do mine so that the nose of the airplane is much skinnier. I don't know why, I think it flies better when you do that. So if you add an extra fold and then it ends up looking something like this, and then you can tuck that paper clip under there to give it some weight, I'd be willing to bet this guy would go pretty good now. What do you think? So did you notice anything about how your airplane would fly based on how you threw the airplane? Throwing your plane in different ways allows you to see how it will land, right? If you throw it really hard, as hard as you can, it tends to dive with its nose end towards the ground and almost crash like a, like a plane would crash, right? But if you're gentle and you just softly do it, it tends to glide slower and then it also tends to land like you would want an airplane to land, right? Like just kind of coming slowly towards the ground to a stop, not diving by the nose straight down into the ground. 
want you to think about that when you think about what we've talked about today. We've spent a lot of time here today talking about a fruit of the Spirit, which is gentleness, right? Gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit that can help our relationships. When we treat people roughly, relationships can nosedive just like our airplanes can. And when we nosedive a relationship, it can be really painful. It hurts our feelings, right? When we treat people with gentleness, relationships can last for years and years, and they also can bring us joy. I want you to always remember to treat people the way you want to be treated. Would you want someone to treat you rough or would you want someone to treat you gentle? Think back to how I began our time today. If you ever come to my house and you get the pleasure of meeting my pup, I want you to treat Lizzie with gentleness. But I also want you to treat everybody in your life with gentleness too. All right, have a good week and I'll see you later.